This is tabbouleh. Finally found french fries. Amazing hummus bread, and look at that falafel. Italian falafel. We're like ruined. Like oh. so ruined. Oh. So good. Hey guys, we're Warnock and Chipwe, and, and we are back. We went to Israel to answer one singular question. Why should we, as the next generation of Christian leaders, care about Israel? We found the answer. We did. Seriously guys, come along, it's gonna be amazing. Hey guys, so we're on our last day in Israel and we're saving the best for last. One, we have a selfie stick. Two, we've gotten no sleep. Three, we're going to so many amazing sites today. We're gonna introduce you to our amazing tour guide, Doobie. Doobie, where are we going today? Shalom everyone. Actually, we're going to start with Mount Carmel. Then we're gonna to go to the Mountain of Beatitudes and the Sea of Galilee. Doobie was the man that made everything so real. It was like just listening to this cool storyteller. He just was breaking it down. When God speaks, you hear it and the whole people heard it. Really I was. was like a kid in a candy shop. I was like, teach me everything, Doobie. So the first place that Doobie took us was to Mount Carmel. And Mount Carmel, there was, he goes and looks at us, he's like, so do you guys remember the, the amazing story of what took place here? We opened up our Bibles and we actually read out loud in the car when it was the powerful story where God puts his blessing upon Elijah's offering over the prophets of Baal. Ooh, it's getting good. We just got amped. We were like, cool, we're gonna, like, you mean we're actually gonna get to go to the mountaintop where this happened? And Doobie's like, yeah. We are on the top of Mount Carmel, which is 1 Kings 18. My spirit is feeling supercharged at the moment. And this is the location where the miracle of bringing fires from heaven happened. We were the only ones there. Normally there's, how many people there are normally? There's like hundreds of people literally every day pouring in. And it was just us and we were able to film and you know on our right, I think it was, we're looking at Jericho and on the left just various elements of the promised land and you're visualizing the wars and the battles and the whole Old Testament unfolding to see Wow, these things all happened and all in this area and on top of being at this vantage point where God just like brought down fire. Elijah, one prophet against 450 prophets of Baal. So just even understand or comprehend the history, the ramifications, the power that happened here. After three and a half years of the toughest drought that ever occurred to the land of Israel, Elijah is asking the people of Israel to pour on the altar the most important commodity that they could have in a year of drought is their waters. And not only once, not only twice, three times, which means literally the huge trench and the sacrifices and the bulls and the woods and the stones to take the only commodity that can assure your life, water in years of drought and give it away, trusting God for the abundance of rain. Once they were willing in their hearts to pour and ask, execute his demand, God knew that they chose him already. This is just the start of the day and I can't wait for the rest. We are in the ancient town of Capernaum known as the hometown of Jesus where he centralized his ministry. It's like seeing where Jesus lived, where he walked. And it's massive, like and that synagogue is massive. And therefore Jesus was very famous because he was the rabbi, the teacher, the miracle former of this place. And John and James and Peter, he came to the water where they were fishing and he just gathered them and he says, guys, I'm going to turn you into fishermen, fisherman. Man. Just fishermen. Um, this area right here under this church right below, this is the house of Peter. It was not only the town of miracles, it was not only the home of Jesus' ministry, but it was also the beginning of the very first church. To think that Jesus gathered here with Peter and his disciples and hung out, that's crazy, right here. Welcome to Beatitude. Yeah, let's go to where, you know, Jesus did the Sermon of the Beatitudes, such a powerful sermon in the New Testament. And literally we're walking, we're like, where is it? Where, you know, it's this modern site now where it's been turned into a tourist attraction. When I see all these people over here, yeah. it's changing to something very, very different. I have no idea where Jesus preached, how he preached, where the magnitude and the masses were. It was created here with the gift shop, with the offering boxes, was created as a, as, as a money drawer, as opposed to us being able to sit somewhere and read the scripture. Yeah, we complicate it and we make it impure. It felt like a rest yeah. stop to me. And literally, it just was like... <laughs> buses on buses. Buses on buses and a very manufactured. 
Catherine. This is the one location, the Sea of Galilee, that I've been just gonna knowing go. I have to go. <laughs> We're gonna get there soon. I had a hard time. I had so many mixed emotions because it was one of our most special yeah. places to visit. I knew that there was a reality of Jesus and his life there that I just had to pick up, I had to acknowledge, I had to witness. This is where Jesus walked on the water and told the storm to be still. Over and over again, I just keep hearing the Lord say, I'm here, I'm real, this happened. It's beautiful, it's huge. You can see people on boats worshiping the Lord. It is just, it's really surreal to see this place that we're, we read about for our whole lives. And we spent 20 minutes maybe just sitting there at the shore. We bottled up some water from the Sea of Galilee and took it home because I was like, I want this in my home. I want this sea that Jesus literally walked on. I want a daily reminder that miracles happen. They happen today, just as they happen during Jesus' time. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of the Roman centurion that said, Jesus, you don't have to come heal my servant. You just say the word and he'll be healed. And that happened here in Capernaum and it's becoming very real again. Catherine and I were joking that we're going to be unpacking this for probably over a year and someone actually told us like don't stress out because it's probably going to take you a while to untangle and unravel all the things that God puts in your heart and reveals to you and I think that's totally true. I don't know how this keeps happening but at these sites we're being left completely on our own without a single other person here. We're at the Jordan River at the moment, the peaceful border between Israel and Jordan and just worshiping here in my heart but more than worshiping there's something about this river. As we walked the bank, I just was overcome with this sense of I'm being commissioned and it's my choice. Am I gonna say yes or no? And I turned to Chanchi and I go, Chanchi, like there's a commissioning that we can pick up here if we want it. And Chanchi was like, yes! So that was a really powerful moment. So behind me is the space in the Jordan River that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. This is also a location where Elijah ascended up to heavens in carriages of fire. And another very important event that took place here, this is where Joshua crossed the Jordan River with the Israelites to go and inherit the land. All these things took place in that bank and we were really responding to it. I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed with how that's affecting me and I can feel it's gonna be a long processing road for me. This river almost longs for your soul to cry out for your purpose, to cry out for God to do something remarkable through your life. We are in the hometown of Mary Magdalene in the church being built here to honor women. And you can hear the echo, you can hear the amazing acoustics. Beyonce, come sing here please. We had heard from other people, you've got to see Magdala. And then there was this beautiful museum. And what was really special was that it's such a powerful tribute to the women of the Bible built by a female architect. Inside it honors like Mary and Martha, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. The Jewish people blocked the road so that the Romans on horseback could not access and desecrate their synagogue. The fact that this remains is quite amazing. That was probably the most authentic historic feel we encountered the whole trip because it's still fairly untouched. And so the town of Mary Magdalene was just really breathtaking. You know what's funny? After all these intensely like, you know, spiritual sites, it's like this is also God's design for us to just have fun. And I could agree more. Guys, we're at the Dead Sea. We're about to float. Float. To float gets all salty and exfoliated. So. <laughs> Look at this. And it feels like I'm in a like hot tub, it's so warm. And I'm assured there are no creatures in here, there's no fish, there's no slimy anything that can touch me. It's like my idea of heaven. Warned under no circumstances to let salt get in your eyes. Uh, apparently we will curse the day we entered the Dead Sea if that happens, so uh, pray for us guys. It's worth it. All right, let's do this. Are you floating that easy? Oh my god. <laughs> Just lay, lay back and go. Let loose. Oh my gosh, I'm floating. I've never been. Guys, it's been an amazing, long, beautiful day. We're ending it in the Dead Sea. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on our journey. 
back to the U.S. We know it's bittersweet. We miss our families, but definitely going to miss this place in so many ways. It just does something to your communication with God. I think coming back and having to just do normal life again, while beautiful in its own right, I feel it, there's like this tension of frustration where I want to kind of bottle up what I was able to live and bring it into my daily life. I haven't been able to figure out how to do that yet. We've literally just taken off from Tel Aviv airport. And what a meaty, meaty day it was. We, we hit, I think, at least 10, 10 different locations. That was the most privileged day, one of the most privileged days of my entire life. Seeing how he lived, where he lived, the culture, the communities, um, how countercultural Jesus was and is. I have been forever changed and it'll probably take me about a year to unpack. Chanchi and I went to Israel with the question of why. We know we're supposed to care about Israel. Scripture tells us that much, but we don't tangibly know why. We were asked so many times on the trip, have you figured it out yet? Have you figured it out yet? I think we can confidently say absolutely we figured it out and it's actually surprisingly simple. And the short answer is because it's home. It's our history. It's who it's hardwired in our spiritual DNA to love our home. I feel as though God has made such rich deposits in my heart here. And just the Israeli people are extraordinary. The promised land carries the promise in it. That's why you have to come here physically yes. on the soles of your shoes. You carry the soil of this land. And then with this soil, nothing can spoil. And I cannot wait to continue and I hope to come back really soon. I really do. You're home, my darling. You are home. This is your home. That was powerful. That was so good.